Welcome everybody, and I do mean everybody. We have a lot of new people here, which is awesome. I love it. But uh, not many people know who I am at the moment, so let me reintroduce myself. My name's Reed, and you're watching The Manifestation of Imagination. Today, I have a video and a point to make on something that I think is very important. Canadian Prepper likes to make a comment all the time about monocrystalline panels suck compared to polycrystalline panels. So, is that true? Well, I have a very important little caveat on that thing. Monocrystalline panels, that are wafers that they're made of, these, these nice little cells that make up the panel, they're thicker. Polycrystalline panels are usually a little thinner when they put it. So this, when they say monocrystalline, they mean they grow a solid crystal of silicone, and they use a device and cut it up into little pieces, slice it up. They can only go so thin before you know these things shatter with our current technology. So that means is the sun, to excite this and produce electricity, takes a little more oomph to get it going. Polycrystalline panels work better often in lower light conditions. However, these two panels, there's something very interesting about them. These are both monocrystalline panels. Um, this is what I use for my big array. And this is what we call damage, severe hail damage and stuff like, and so smashed. I will bring the camera up close so you can see it. This panel glass is destroyed from top to bottom. This one is fine. Now, one thing that's really neat about monocrystalline panels is when they get smashed, even when their glass is torn to pieces, they tend to still work. Most of the polycrystalline panels and thin film panels I've seen, like a Kirocero and, and such, they're made with a process that literally puts them right on the glass. And when they get smashed, they don't work anymore. So maybe, in terms of preparedness, a monocrystalline panel would be better. So this is a little point and caveat in the selection of panels that I haven't heard anyone talk about. I think it's an important one to consider. If you live down here in the Four Corners region, where we have a bazillion amount of sun, when monocrystalline panels get going, well, they really get going. These panels are more efficient. They do a much better job at converting solar energy into electricity when there's a lot of sun. It's also why pretty much all satellites use a monocrystalline design. They are some of the most efficient solar panels that exist when they do them on satellites. I think they're approaching almost 30%. These ones are about 18%. But, you know, instead of me paying, you know, a dollar or something a watt for my panels, NASA's probably paying like 20 something dollars a watt. Big difference. And I've got land space, they don't. <laughs> but back to the point. I wanted to show that monocrystalline panels are have a real distinct advantage in terms of what we may be facing. So let me plug in a meter and I'll show you. So I've got an undamaged one and a damaged one. And if the sun will just be nice and stay put for a minute, we can get pretty accurate, pretty good readings between the two. Okay, I'm trying not to shade this panel too much. So I have some leads here that I've attached and I'm gonna plug them into my meter, and we can see how much electricity this is producing. And we're just going voltage right now. I'm not hooking up to a charge controller to pull out the amperage. So it's, uh, whoops, well, ignore the minus, but still, we got 43.231, uh, uh, it's bouncing around. Yeah, as the sun's like dimming it again. But we're up at the 40s, over 40 volts. This is good. This is telling me that all of these cells that are connected up in this panel, all of them are producing electricity. I've got no shorts. So, real good thing. I can already hear some electrical engineers starting to demand some other tests, but for now, this is good enough. We will hook it up later to a charge controller and show people what's going on. And now the sun is disappearing on me. Let's try the other panel and see if we're right now at 40 and a half. Okay, everyone, I've swapped over to the other panel and we have a, a tiny bit more sunlight here. This cloud just does not want to seem to get out of the way, but gotta do what we gotta do. And we're getting about 42 volts right now. And given the judged irradiance I'm seeing through the clouds, I'd say that matches up really well. So all the cracking on this other panel 
will lower the amount of light that's getting to the solar cells a little bit, especially when we do our repair work on it. And I'll, oh wow, now we got the sun peeking out and we're climbing up to 43.8. Yep, we're really matching. Now we got good equal strengthness. Almost 44. Well, yeah, it's doing really well. So these are really matching up quite well with each other. So it's a really good point to make is monocrystalline panels, when they're designed like this, they can take a horrific beating and still do something. Now the only problem with them is once the glass is broken like this, the panels are now susceptible to water, moisture, and stuff. Because usually the glass is going to crack all the way through, and so they can get into these wires and it can cause problems. Now when they make these panels, they actually take the glass and then the plastic sheet that the solar cells are mounted onto, and they glue it directly to the glass. That's why even though this is shattered to pieces, all the glass isn't falling off and just come out. And trying to replace the glass on one of these is um, pretty much an impossible job. It's extremely difficult. Uh, so to repair this, to actually keep using this, we have a good option and some good ideas. And we'll, I was watching a video by Canadian Prepper. I will dig it up and I'll stuff the link in the description if you want to watch it. And he was showing this security film to mount on doors and windows. So I was thinking to myself, that security film might work really well for repairing these solar panels. So we'll take the frame off of it, take the security film, put it on, and make a new frame, maybe out of wood or something like that, and then mount this back up. But we'd also have to reinforce the back of the panel. This thing, let me see if I can grab it here for you. These panels use the glass as part of their structural integrity. So, watch what happens. It really, really wants to move. There, when this thing has, you can also see, uh, if you can tell, this is bowing and moves under the pressure of my fingers. It doesn't have the strength it had anymore. So, we need to put that security film on it reinforce it on the back to provide support because right now if we got a really good snow load this would come apart now let's take a look at this other one so when i move it, it doesn't move the same way and when i push on it it doesn't want to give so the glass on these panels is really important for their structural integrity the other thing is i've got a crazy idea about building uh, a, a structure, a house structure or a barn or something like that, where the panels are mounted up in the roof and we use the reflectors to gather the sunlight and put them up at the panels. And I'm still working on the CAD drawing and such. Once I got it ready, I'll point out what I'm going to do and try to build a little prototype of it. But the idea of that is that even if you had panels that were smashed, they're up there, they're getting the sunlight, they're not going to get hail, they're not going to get snow. And especially with great these kind of panels, they're never going to get smashed. You just got to deal with your roof above them that's going to get smashed. So you'd capture the light, reflect it in, and shine it up to the panels. Obviously, doing that will be very expensive. But I'm very curious about it because it would make your solar system very tolerant of ugly weather that might be coming our way. And considering that the climate is obviously shifting some way, we might want to take something like that into consideration. But my main point for the day was monocrystalline power, uh, panels. Are they better than polycrystalline panels? Well, in terms of damage, I would say yes. That's definitely my opinion, is these guys will handle horrific damage better. However, I've got one last caveat. Let me grab this other panel. So this is the new POA solar panel I reviewed a while back. Now it's a polycrystalline solar panel, but its construction is very interesting to me. It actually has polycrystalline thin cells mounted on a plastic sheet and glued to glass. That mirrors this design really well. Now I have not smashed this panel to see if it still works after getting smashed. I'm not entirely interested in doing that either. But 
I have hopes that a horrific hailstorm, this thing would come through even with its glass smashed. And so I think other panels that are polycrystalline designed like this have a much greater chance of mirroring this sort of resiliency. Now I'm actually not one interested in doing testing to destruction except in initial engineering designs because I'm one of those people that really loves not wasting things. I have a big issue with wasting things. I'm one of those people that when you see a destroyed, smashed up house or an abandoned warehouse, I, keep, I think to myself, what would it take to rebuild that and make it usable again? Or go visit some place like Mesa Verde, ancient ruins. I wonder, huh, I wonder if we could make this useful again and rebuild the structures. I tend to think that way. So I'm not super interested in doing testing to destruction right now. Uh, we, there's plenty of other YouTubers that might, so we may have to check with one of them and say, hey, you wanna break a panel and see if it still works? <laughs> but that's the point for this video, is when picking out monocrystalline versus polycrystalline solar panels, there might be a bigger issue to consider. If you live down here in the Four Corners region where we have a bazillion amounts of sun, monocrystalline powers, pan, 